here from Back Row Buddies and the video we want to share with you today is about our tips and tricks from season five. Now it's that time of year when we look back on the previous season and list kind of the lessons we learned along the way. Now none of these are earth shattering but we hope that you can pick up one or two little items that help improve your travels uh, or give you inspiration for ideas of solving your own problems. If you don't want to watch the whole video, if you look in the description below, there's links to each of the tips. So if you're just interested in one of the tips, you can just click on that and go right to that point in the video. Tip one, use a Ford truck service center. So in previous seasons, seasons one through uh, four, we were in a camper van built on a Ford Transit passenger van. Now it was small enough that we could take it to our local regular Ford dealer and have it service there. But the Echo is bigger and I forget, I think we're over 11 feet. Our local Ford dealer said that's too tall if they have to put the Echo on a lift to get under the vehicle then it just won't fit in their garage. So we actually had to go find a Ford truck service center. It was a little farther away, but they'll do all the Ford service that we need to have done on the Echo. Tip two is be aware of non-covered warranty item charges. So when we first got our Echo, there were some items, we had a list of items that we wanted a Winnebago dealer to look over and, and repair in within the warranty. Well, when we took it into TransWest, they informed us that if they look at an item and they submit it to Winnebago and Winnebago says that's not covered under warranty, then TransWest will charge us a hundred bucks per item that they look at. So we quickly pulled some things off our list. One was the wires on the roof from the solar panels. They just didn't look very secure to us, but we weren't sure if that was the way it was designed or there was something missing, there was some tie downs missing or something. So we pulled that off the list because for a hundred bucks we can figure out a better way to secure those wires in case it was as designed. But just be aware that I, I think, I don't know if that's typical of all dealers, but at least it was of the dealer we went to that if it's not covered under warranty, they will charge you just to look at it. Tip three is attach a carabiner to the super slider door. Now the super slider is a little expandable tube that we mounted underneath the echo that holds our sewer hose. And before we even hit the road, the door had popped open and actually fell off and we actually lost it and had to replace it. So all we did was attach a little carabiner here, just a little extra piece of security to make sure we don't lose that door again. Tip five is to remove the rear view mirror. Now in the Echo, there is no window out the back as you can see. So the rear view mirror that the Ford Transit comes with is totally useless <laughs> unless you just want to see what's inside the Echo. But we actually found it to be a distraction while we were driving because, you know, things would go by and it would catch the light and it would catch our eye and we kept looking at it. And we thought that it would be better if it just wasn't there and wouldn't, you know, fight for our attention while we were driving. So we removed it for season five. Now that meant that our, our front shade, as you can see, is designed to have the mirror there so we've kind of got that hole uh, where the rear view mirror was so it's not too bad because there is some still some molding there that comes down and blocks part of that. Tip five is you can fold back just part of the fan cover so in addition to the windshield and side shades we got from Van Made Gear we also have a cover that goes on our Max air fan and if you notice it's foldable. So this is great for adding some insulation to that big hole in the roof <laughs> and also blocks the sun. So it's nice to have it there, but you may want to still have the fan either running or just have it open for airflow, but you still want to block the sun 
and somewhat insulation. So you can just fold over part of it. So here's that shade installed above the fan. So yeah, you can just fold over part of it. Now, sometimes because it's magnet, it likes to snap back up. So we just use a little baggy clip sometimes to kind of make sure it'll stay open and not flat back on us. Tip six is make sure items that you're going to leave outside can withstand the abuse. And you know, cause it's sitting out in all kinds of weather. That item for us is our camp sign and we use it, we set it up when we're leaving with the RV so people know that the campsite is still occupied. And season four was the first season we used this, I believe. And we made the hinges out of stainless steel, but for some reason we didn't use stainless steel screws. So the end of season four, those screws just totally rusted out. Plus the, the paint really needed a lot of touch up. So the beginning of season five, we replaced the screws with stainless steel screws and we added a coat of urethane on top of the paint just to help it hold up. And it got still got chipped up a little bit and, and still needed some touch up work. There was actually a little bit of rust on the hinges and we used some navy jelly to get that off. So we might have to just touch that up every season. But yeah, if you're going to leave stuff out in the weather, make sure you try to protect it and make sure it'll last. Tip seven is lubricate and tighten the window hinges periodically. Now the window hinges on the Echo can be a little finicky sometimes and they sometimes will stick in the open position and you can't get them closed. But we found if we make sure we keep the screws tight, so these two screws, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of dark, where it attaches to the vehicle and then also where these attach to the, well, plastic or glass or whatever you want to call it. Um, make sure those are tight and then we also would lubricate the actual hinge itself with uh, T9. And doing those things, two things periodically would help keep those from sticking. Although every once in a while it would stick again and then we'd pull out the lubrication and lubricate it again. <laughs> Tip eight is use checklists when breaking camp. Now we have checklists for breaking camp, for setting up camp, for preparing the RV for the beginning of the season, what we do when we, before we stow it at the end of the season. But we found the most important checklist to always refer to is when breaking camp because sometimes those items can be rather disastrous if they're forgotten. Like you leave a window open and you start driving down the road, you can actually break the window. So making sure you have all those items done is really important when you're breaking camp. Now initially when we first started traveling we just used a little index card where we had them written on there and we would just walk through the list on the index card. But then we went to using an app on our phone because we liked being able to check it off as we went along. Now initially we were using the Togo or Togo RV app that had a that had checklists in it and we would kind of make up our own checklist and use that so you could check it off as you go or if especially if it wasn't in order, you go, yeah, it did that, did that, did that, oh, didn't do that, and you go do it, and having it be able to check it off made it easy to figure out what you had left and what you hadn't done yet. And in that app, you could then, when you were all done, see, oh, I did everything, now I can reset it for the next time. However, they moved that app into Road Trippers under the Road Pass umbrella, and they removed that feature, that checklist feature which we were really sorry about. So I was writing to the support there at, at Road Pass, but they were very friendly and very helpful. So they actually referred me to another phone app called Check Check. And if you go to our related blog post, there's a link to it because there's a couple different apps that are called Check Check I discovered and not all of them are resettable checklists. But that's all it is, is a simple checklist that are resettable. So. I don't know if you can see that. Here's the app here. We have a bunch of checklists in there. And then um, our breaking camp one. 
is there and then we can just go through and and check them off as we go and then reset it when you get through them all so that's really nice we 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 haven't actually used that yet on the road but that's we moved all our lists over to check check since um, Togo or to go RV app went away. Tip nine is use the driver's seat as a footrest. So this tip probably isn't for everybody because I have really long legs. If you mm -hmm. can see that. So I have a 37 inch inseam. So the driver's seat is actually perfect for me to prop my legs up, but that's probably not true for most people, but I find it comfortable. <laughs> tip 10 is we discovered the 3M dual lock strips work better than the command picture hanging strips do. Where we noticed this was actually on our TPMS. We had mounted it up here and we initially used those picture hanging strips and it just kept falling down. But since we switched to the 3M dual lock, it uh, hasn't fallen down at all and stayed up since. Tip 11 is mount the Verizon Jetpack outside the cubby. We have a Verizon Jetpack. Um, we use this because our phones are AT&T, so this gives us another cell phone option. But we initially just put it on the shelf here inside this cubby. But because this isn't well insulated, this cubby gets really hot. And so in addition, we actually added a fan here. It's not here right now. but. We put a fan on here to help cool that down, but we just mounted this outside to keep it out of that hot space in there. Tip 12 is command hooks in the bathroom for hanging our washcloths. Now, command hooks are nothing new to RVers or van, camper van people either, but we once the season had already started, we actually added a few more hooks. So we added one here and one here and one here. So this holds um, both of our washcloths that we use to wash ourselves. And then this one here is just for a little cleaning rag that we can use to wipe off the, the bathroom sink or something. Tip 13 is to travel with an empty or partially full fresh tank to reduce weight. So the first thing we did when we started out last season was we took our rig to a cat scale and weighed it because we want to make sure we were within our weight limits. There's three weight limits you really want to pay attention to. There's the GAWR for both the front axle and the rear axle. And then there's what's called the GVWR, which is kind of like the total. So we weighed the rig when we were fully loaded with all our gear. We were both in the side of the vehicle. Our gas tank was full, our propane tanks were full our fresh water tank was full. So we're basically at the maximum weight, plus all our groceries were in here as well. So that was the maximum weight we knew we'd be carrying. So what we discovered was we were actually under, because the cat scale will weigh the weight at both your axles. So we were under each of the axle weights limits. So we were fine there but our total was about 100 pounds over. So we knew we had to do something. <laughs> and water weighs a lot. And the Echo comes with a 50 gallon freshwater tank, which we don't normally need that much water. So we just got in the habit of not filling it up. So as long as we kept it under 75%, we knew we were good with our total weight, as long as we didn't add more weight to the rig. <laughs> Tip 14 is to set the water heater to comfort mode to a low temperature before taking a shower. So the water heater that comes with the Echo has two modes. There's eco mode and there's comfort mode. And the difference is in comfort mode, it recirculates the water around the lines. So the water will be instantly hot when you turn on the hot water faucet. Now the point of turning the temperature down is not only will the water be hot when you first turn the shower on, it'll be the temperature you want to take the shower in so you don't have to mix any of the cold. What that means is you're not going to waste any of your fresh water down the drain as you're waiting for the water to heat up or trying to figure out the right mix 
to get the right temperature for the shower. And we, I think we usually set it somewhere between 95 degrees and 105 degrees. I forget, well, I'll have to discover that again this season because I didn't write down what temperature I actually liked, but you'll learn what it is what, so you don't have to worry about mixing cold in when you take the shower. Just turn it on full hot and you'll have an instant shower. Now you have to wait a few minutes after you change the setting to make sure everything uh, kind of balances out there to get the right temperature, but we find that will save on your fresh water. So here are the water heater controls. So there's Eco, there's Comfort, and then you can adjust the temperature to what you want it to be. And it's going to complain because I don't have the propane on. <laughs> Tip 15 is flick the screens before you open them. Now on the Echo, the screens are actually inside the windows. And so if you want to open or close the window, you have to open up the screen to get to it. So if you just give it a little flick, the purpose of that is to get the bugs off of there because the bugs like to hang out there, especially if you have the window open. So then you open the screen and work quickly before the bugs come back <laughs> and close it back up again. But yeah, we find that that helps keep the bugs from getting inside. Tip 16 is to use a smaller pillow to gain length in the bed. Now the beds that come with the Echo, they're only 76 inches long and we're both six foot tall. So they are pretty much barely long enough for us to be comfortable. Now, I, I'm i comfortable, but I normally sleep on my side and I kind of scrunch up my pillow and, and I'm fine. But Keith thought it was a little tight. So he actually switched to a smaller pillow. I don't know if you can see the difference here. So this is kind of a standard pillow. So having a smaller pillow actually gained him about two inches in length and that seemed to make things more comfortable for him so he was happy in doing that. Tip 17 is give unused items to charity or ship them home. So we started the season with these big thick comforters on each of our beds but Keith didn't like all that bulk he felt it took up too much space on a on what was already a small bed so he actually went out and bought a wool blanket, but then we didn't want to keep carrying this other big thick comforter with us that we weren't using. So we actually stopped by a Goodwill store and gave it to Goodwill. So hopefully it found a good home. Another option if you don't want to uh, actually give it away, but you still want to hang on to it for some other reason, you actually could ship items home if you discover you weren't really using them or needing them on your trip. Tip 18 is the side snaps on the insulating curtain are really unnecessary. The Winnebago Echo comes with this nice insulating curtain that insulates the cab from the rest of the RV. So we really like that. We actually put it up every night and take it down every morning. And there's snaps that hold it into place. And there's snaps, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight snaps along the top. And then there's also, I guess, two more snaps down the side to hold it in place. But as you can see, you really don't need to use the side snaps. And since we take it down and put it up every single day, we just stopped using those four side snaps because it really didn't seem to make much of a difference. Tip 19 is that RV chemical toilet tablets can be cut into four pieces to use in the cassette toilet. Now we normally prefer using a liquid um, toilet chemical because we can control how much we put in the cassette. The cassette toilet is only five gallons where most RV tanks are much larger than that. So the tablets are really overkill for the cassette. but we did have the liquid chemical bottle leak on us once and that made a big mess. 
and there were times where we had troubles finding the liquid so we actually bought the tablets so we found that in order to make it a little more reasonable amount of chemicals for the small cassette is we actually cut it into uh, four pieces I don't know if that's focusing on there that you can actually see that um, it's a little messy and crumbly but we feel better doing that than putting a whole tablet in there. What you could do is just seems like a waste. Tip 20 is to plug high power appliances directly into the 20 amp or 15 amp outlet on the campsite pedestal. Now this is in cases, if we're at a campground where we have electrical hookups, that usually means that we want to run our air conditioner, otherwise we don't really care about hookups. So when we have the air conditioner running, and we want to run another appliance like the instant pot or the induction cooktop which also draws a lot of power instead of having all that on our inverter we would take that outside and plug it directly into one of the other outlets on the campsite pedestal which is usually like a 20 or 15 amp outlet since we have our RV plugged into the 30 amp so that does two things. One, it reduces the load that's on our circuits inside the RV so we don't we don't trip anything like a breaker or the inverter shuts down because there's too much load. And it also means that those appliances usually generate heat. So especially the instant pot or the induction cooktop and so we don't really want to add heat to the inside of the RV which we're trying to cool so it kind of is a little dual purpose there. Tip 21 is to cover up most of the Hughes surge protector with tape. So this is the Hughes surge protector. We use this when we hook into a campsite pedestal. We put this in the line as well. So this helps protect our RV from any surges or you know bad wirings at a kind of iffy campsite or something. But we were camping, this was kind of early in the season, we were camping at the state park and it's you know a nice dark quiet little campground and I'm laying in bed at night trying to get to sleep and I noticed there's this bright light shining into the bedroom window. So I'm thinking, who's got a bright light on? So I peer out the window and look down, and the light was actually coming from the surge protector. There is a whole dog face logo on here, and the light shines out. And the light is white if everything's working properly and it turns red if it detects an issue. So you still kind of want to see the light, but I don't need that huge bright light shining. I mean, it might be okay if you're in a private campground and there's lots of other lights on so you don't really notice it. But when you're in a nice dark environment to have this bright light shining around just didn't seem what we wanted. So we just used some tape and covered up most of the logo. We left the dogs two little eyes there so we can still tell if the light is white or red but uh, this is much nicer for us and nicer on our eyes at night. Tip 22 is to scrape the Americanizer with a file if it's hard to get the sewer hose off. Now the Americanizer is a little product that James over at the Fit RV designed and sells and it's intended to make uh, dumping the cassette toilet a little easier. So when you're dumping the cassette toilet into an RV dump station, it's easier if you connect it up to a sewer hose to get it in there instead of trying to aim into the little hole. So that's what the Americanizer does. So the one end connects up to a regular RV sewer hose and the other end screws on to the cassette. Now, when we first got the Americanizer, it worked great on the sewer hose that came with the Echo. But our sewer hose, for some reason, was too short that we got with the Echo. So we actually bought this Rhino Flex sewer hose. But it fit a little tighter, and we really struggled 
to get that on and off and it's not really something you want to struggle with um, so there's these little pegs on the Americanizer that kind of fit into the little uh, catches on the sewer hose so all we did was take a file and filed those down a little bit and now it comes on and off pretty easily Tip 23 is to add a handle to the inside of the screen door. Yeah, the design of these RV screen doors still kind of baffles us. But at the beginning of the season, we had added this little Camco, which allows us to open the screen door from the inside without having to pull this slider out. Um, especially if there's lots of bugs around, you don't want to keep opening and closing that slider. But then... There was no good way, this isn't really that great of a thing to pull the door closed with. So we added just a simple little handle. I think we picked it up at Home Depot somewhere, but yeah, just installed that. So now we can easily open, well, at least close the door with that handle when we just want to close the screen door. Tip 24 is to keep a spray bottle filled with a vinegar solution. Vinegar solution is a great way for cleaning. It's inexpensive, it's eco-friendly. And so this is a little spray bottle. We normally keep a solution in here of one part distilled vinegar to one part water. And that's great for just cleaning up. And we keep it here in the water compartment. So when we're dumping the gray tank or dumping the cassette and we get a little spill or something, it's easy to it's right and handy to clean up. We also use this for cleaning the bathroom. We'll spray down the surfaces. Now, vinegar is a little, is somewhat of a disinfectant, but not as good as like bleach, but it doesn't stain like bleach either. Tip 25 is to tape up the AC air vent for better airflow. So the air conditioner in the Echo is a ducted system. So there are ducts back here and there's air ducts up front that allow that air conditioning to go to the different parts but there's also the main unit here and if you don't tape up that air duct in there it just dumps a lot of the cold air right here and so most of it isn't going reaching all the way up front so it's a simple little mod um, the fit rv actually did a much better post on it so if you go over to our blog post you can get a link to what they did and you'll get more details on on how to do that. Tip 26 is to add DC fans for better air circulation. So over the course of the season we actually added four of these DC fans and they just clip to wherever you need them. We have two of them here in the bedroom so if we want some air flowing directly on us at night or just helping to circulate the air it kind of helps even out the heat and the cool. So we really like that. And then we actually put two more up here. We put one up here so we can have it directly blowing on someone sitting at the dinette. And then we put one here up by this cubby. I mentioned before that it gets hot in here. We have the Wii Boost in here. So especially if we have that on, that gets really hot. And if we're sitting in the sun, it, it really toasts in there. So putting a fan on there to help get that heat out of there really helps. Tip 27 is to secure the items on the bedroom shelf. Again, this is nothing really new for our viewers, is to make sure everything is secure. But before we actually would, you know, pull these down and put them back up when on travel days. So now we just secured them. Um, this is actually a new speaker. And it's just, if you can see there, it's just a bungee cord that goes around the... Uh, the hole there and secures it in there and then this is a um, essential oil diffuser and that we just use the uh, command strips to secure it to the shelf it's on there pretty well. i'm gonna pull it off for you <laughs> tip 28 is to check the awning for debris before closing now this caught us this was pretty early in the season we couldn't figure out why we couldn't get the awning to come back out and we struggled and pulled and yanked on it and we finally got it open only to discover that there was just a couple little twigs and a leaf that had been 
on the top and got jammed in there and really jammed things up. So since then we've tried to make it a habit to always look on top of that awning before we close it to make sure there's nothing up there that might jam things up. Now that's a little hard to do because the awning's rather high even for us tall folks. So stepping up on a stool or on a picnic table to look up there. You can also climb up the ladder on the back of the Echo and kind of peer up there. Of course you can't, it's hard to get anything from there, but you know, you get a long pole or broom or something and try to get things off of there before you close it up and it'll save a lot of headaches further down the road. Tip 29 is to keep hand sanitizer in the water compartment. So having the sanitizer right here in the water compartment is handy because this is where we dump the gray tank. We always have this open to when we go to dump the cassette. So it's nice to be able to sanitize your hands when you're done before you touch anything else. So thanks for watching. If you want more details, look in the description below for a link to our related blog post. So check that out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Ta-ta for now. Mm -hmm.